Welcome to episode two of our two-part Brighton Beach, Brooklyn series. Our local guides will show us where to get some mouth-watering food at a local market, a delicious snack at a non-Soviet establishment, and even take us inside a supermarket that looks like a movie theater. We may even have a shot of vodka. If this sounds appealing, keep watching. All right, we're back for part two in Brighton Beach. Got Lenny and John, my amazing local guides here. And to start video two, we're walking through an area that's a bit different than where we were for the first part, right? Yeah, this place has a lot of uh, influence from all the different stands, as me and John like to call them. The Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan, and Kyrgyzstan, all these different types of stands. And um, this is on the inter intersection of Coney Island Avenue and Brighton Beach, so that's probably why we're starting to see a mix of different cultures. All right, guys, let's check out stop number one. They actually had another store here before, and since I was away at school, they, they've made uh, significant changes. This is one of the biggest buffets I have ever seen in New York City. I mean, this is Las Vegas level. They have like beef tongue. Right next to tuna salad. Okay. You have to see this line behind me. There's no YouTube promotion, no TikTok. This is just locals knowing where to go. Some carrots and raisins. So this is plov, it's the national dish of Uzbekistan. Uh, here they use uh, two different types of carrots, yellow and orange. There are, I believe, some raisins or craisins. Not sure Raisins? Which one. Yeah, cranb dried cranberries. Okay. It's cooked for a long time. The meat is slow cooked. It looks very tender, as you can see. I think we literally have every single ingredient in one bite. Uzbeki, plov, I've had this before. I was most excited to try this again. I love lamb. Here we go. Let's Keep us, in mind how tender this meat is. Let's try this. Oh, wow. Flavorful. Just melts in your mouth. So much flavor. I just I just want more of that meat, guys. I like the, the sweet hints that the raisins or craisins give when you're eating the rice. When you go to a supermarket like that and you see a line that takes you 20, 30 minutes to get served, I think Generally speaking, that's a that's a pretty good sign that you're gonna get food like this. Also, I haven't seen in any of the Brighton supermarkets or any Russian supermarket I've been to where someone is serving the food to you. It's always grab and go, like buffet style. You know, in my experience, I've seen some of the best food in New York City can be found in little ethnic supermarkets like this. I'm telling you, really true. Best thing you can do, apart from visiting a Russian supermarket, is find yourself some an older, Uzbek lady friend <laughs> and she will she'll make you the best plove you've ever had in your life Are they, are they, are they waiting for us or any around here somewhere even older Uzbek ladies? <laughs> I don't know. I've been, I've been I've been searching my whole life I can't seem to find one by the way I want to say special thank you to the members of my patreon now None of these local businesses knew that we were coming so you know your support helps me support these businesses and pay for all the food You saw in this video. Thanks a lot guys Something that I've seen in almost every Russian household. These slippers are the key to like any Russian household, I feel like. I've seen them every house I've stepped in. And uh, anytime I go to any house that's not a Russian household, they don't have any slippers. They walk around barefoot or in shoes. <laughs> and you get you get yelled at and, and like almost hit if you walk around barefoot in a Russian house. It's very common that you'll be offered a pair of slippers when you're a guest at someone's house and... They'll probably be those. Men or women, you will be getting these. <laughs> For the second stop in this video, we're gonna show you that Brighton Beach is not just Russian, Ukrainian, former Soviet country food. We're gonna do something a little different. Maybe like 200 yards away from Brighton Beach Avenue, we're still in Brighton, but there is a heavy Mexican, Pakistani, Indian Bangladeshi influence over here and we are going to probably try some samosas or some uh, Middle Eastern sweets. Get dipping in there. I don't know what kind of sauce that is. I have no idea. Looks like a yogurt sauce. Good. Mm. 
It is like a yogurt like stuff. Tangy and a little, a little spicy yeah. or like minty. No, this is spicy. Like mint, minty, minty and uh, yeah. These are good. I didn't expect to eat a samosa on this video, but it's good to show you that there's more to Brighton Beach than just Russian Soviet stuff. Mmm. You know, when she told me it was three dollars, I thought she meant per samosa. One dollar per samosa. Excellent. And a little spicy, a little tangy with that yogurt sauce. I want to segue for a moment. I have two guys here who have similar backgrounds to me. Now, we have parents that were born in the former Soviet Union and they immigrated to Brooklyn originally, mine in the 1970s, you guys in the 90s. Tell me what it was like growing up as a first generation son of former Soviet immigrants. Um, I would like to start off by saying the rumors are true that these parents value education more than anything mm -hmm. and they are very strict when it comes to education. Yeah, so as far as uh, getting to know people and you know the sense of community, living in Brighton Beach and living in New York, even though we're first generation and we, you know, a majority of our friends and family is Russian, the fact that we are in this like cultural hub and the fact that we can go from Brighton Beach to Coney Island Avenue or for example, you know, from a Russian restaurant to a Bangladeshi or Pakistani or Indian spot. Like these are the types of connections that I value a lot and a lot of my friends and a lot of my friendships have come from places outside of just being first generation. My personal story is I grew up in Fairlawn, New Jersey and for anyone who knows the Russian community, it is the biggest Russian community I still believe in New Jersey. A lot of Russians move from Brighton Beach to Fairlawn. So for me walking into these Russian stores, hanging out with Russian people, it is nothing new for me. For our next stop, I actually thought we were about to walk into a movie theater. So this is uh, Netcost Market, formerly known as Millennium Theater. So before it was a supermarket, there were actually plenty of shows and famous Russian artists coming in and performing for the Russian community here in Brighton so, Beach. So yeah, growing up, like you said, it was Millennium Theater. If you were a younger kid and you know what the Christmas spectacular is in Radio City, this is Brighton Beach's center of Radio City. You would have the Christmas spectaculars, the New Year's spectaculars. This is where you would want to take your kid during the holidays. Russians love their cold cuts. <laughs> There's a million different kinds of cured and smoked meat. Here's like all the different all the different frozen dumplings that they sell and people can just make at home. Okay. So every every family usually has uh, if you look inside there's like every family usually has some form of this in their freezer. Yeah. When Corona was starting up, I made sure I had a bunch of these in my freezer. <laughs> Good idea. Yeah. Guys, my grandma used to have these about this so this is the famous non cookie cookie it's a box trap. it's always a trap so if you're a younger kid watching this and you find one of these in like a cupboard or shelf don't fall for it this will likely have sewing equipment or any other random thing apart from cookies <laughs> it will never have cookies so we just got some drinks non-alcoholic from the first supermarket now we're going to the Brighton Bazaar to get some sweets and we're gonna eat it and drink it. Okay, so this one's with the... Condensed milk. Yeah, okay. For the next food tasting, we are sitting in a random park and we're gonna try what looks to me like Russian ice cream, but what, what, is, what is it really? So we got three different kinds of Russian cheesecake dessert. So what we call them in Russian is sirok, which is like little cheeses. And so for, for kids and toddlers, you know, this is the type of dessert that you'd expect to see them eating at any Russian household. And so this is what, what I would look forward to after, you know, finishing all my chicken nuggets or whatever. Like, <laughs> okay. So, yeah. And so we got a uh, caramel. I think this is just a... Uh, condensed milk. Con it's, so it's flavored with sweetened condensed milk, yeah. these two. And this one is a strawberry flavored cheesecake bar. Okay. Chocolate glazed cheesecake bar. Sounds interesting. It's very rich. Growing up, 
parents from Ukraine. My mom would always bring stuff like this. I don't know if it was exactly this, but Russian candy from the Russian stores. So for me, Lenny said it brought back his childhood memories. It totally brings back my childhood memories as well. Yeah, so let's give it a shot. Wow. Wow. It's been a while since I've had this and it's just like explosion of rich richness and flavor. It's impossible to chew. Like it's mm -hmm. very it takes a while to to get everything together. This has also been a, a long time coming for me. Yeah. Um, I always loved coming home, seeing these inside the cheese tray in our fridge. <laughs> um, yeah, this these, these brings me back home. You guys, we got one more surprise for you before we call it a video. Who's in the mood for a shot of vodka? How are we going to celebrate the end of the two video series? We're going to try some Russian sodas, compote, and with a nice shot of vodka. Here be bar. Here be bar. Here be bar. Here channel. be Russian bar. <laughs> <laughs> oh, yeah. So we're gonna do a shot, a and then shot. we're gonna down it with some compote. Compote. This is um, boiled fruits with sugar. Okay. And the only reason Lenny's not doing this is he's training for the Olympics. That is the only way you're getting out of doing a shot on this channel for the record. So, ready? Zdrovi. This is the number one COVID vaccine. I could have handled it without a chaser, but it was pretty strong. Maybe it's because I'm married, I don't drink much anymore, and I'm a boring human being, but it's good, <laughs> it's good to get back to a shot of vodka. We're gonna have the trajun. Trajun definitely has some bubbles, okay. a lot more bubbles than what we saw in the quas. And this is a drink made from tarragon. It's a Georgian drink, but also uh, Russians love it as well. Non-alcoholic, not everything here is it's alcohol. A soda. It's a soda. It's a soda, so. A nice little pour, a little green tint, green tinge. That was like the stuff you rinse with at the dentist after you get a cleaning, maybe. It's really minty. Like, I don't know if I like that. I think it's, it's a little, it tastes a little too much like medicine for me, not to bash anyone that likes it, but. Thank you for having us. Come find this in Brighton Beach. Yeah, so John mentioned I'm um, training for the Olympics here. This is my stuffed animal mascot. We're here trying to grow wrestling for uh, for the youth. And um, we've done a couple of charity uh, charity fundraisers and we're looking to continually expand, maybe have a YouTube channel in the future. So you can check us out on Instagram at Sebi the Sloth and um, SebiTheSloth.com. Members of the Barrio, I hope you enjoyed part two of this Brighton Beach series. If you missed part one, I'm gonna put a link to it somewhere around my head right here. Brighton Beach, incredible spot if you like to eat, if you like to drink, if you just wanna see weird and fun things, come to South Brooklyn, guaranteed to have a good time. Thank you so much for watching, as always. Till next.